How many times has this happened to you? You have the most productive day you've had in a long time. You get a ton of stuff done. Then at the end of the day, you sit back, you look at all of the things that you worked on, and suddenly you stop thinking about what you did and you start thinking about all the things you still need to do. Oh, this this text box doesn't really look the way I want it to. Oh, that's not handling the errors properly. Oh, that message doesn't look good on the UI. Oh, the recycler view isn't updating properly there endless things. You know, I think this is kind of a phenomenon in software development. This idea that you're never finished. A project is always, you know, 90% complete, no matter how productive you are, or even how long a piece of software has been live in production, it's still never complete. Or at least that's how it feels when you're the developer. I'm pretty sure I read about this phenomenon somewhere, but I looked for memes online, I couldn't find anything. So anyway, I drew this very technical diagram to illustrate what I'm talking about. So here we have an X and Y axis, you have uh, time on the bottom axis on the X axis, and you have percent percentage complete on the Y axis. And then there is a line that shows your progress over time. So you can see that you start pretty rapidly, everything's going great, but then uh, time just starts to get eaten away and you're not really making a lot of progress. This is the this is the idea that I'm talking about, that you, you start a project or you start a side project or you're working on a current project and it just doesn't ever seem to be complete. And this this is, this is happens to me all the time and it happened to me today, so I wanted to talk about it. If you've been following along with my vlogging series, you know that I'm currently working on a new course with dynamic feature modules and clean architecture. Now there's a ton of other things that I'm covering in this course, you know, Kotlin, Coroutines, Dagger, MV, MVI architecture, room persistence library, retrofit, tons of stuff, but that's not like the core concept of the cor course. The core concept is dynamic feature modules and clean architecture. So anyway, if you've been following along, you know that I've been working on a new project for that. I'm building out the course. I'm still planning it, playing around, building the app that I'm gonna show you in that course. So in my last vlog, I, I talked about some difficulties that I was having and basically how I wasted, I would say, the better part of two days, probably pretty much two days, fooling around with a toolbar and figuring out how like to update the UI if it's collapsed, update the UI if it's not, you know, anyway, watch the vlog if you want to know more about it. But any, I wasted a bunch of time, basically. So today, and also yesterday, I made really good progress. I got a lot of stuff done. I hooked stuff up into the room persistence library. I'm actually able to do some inserts, updates, deletes, retrievals. Basically, all of the main kind of core components of the application are in place now, or for uh, one of the modules anyway, because it's going to be a multi-module project. Basically, the core pieces of one of the modules are all in place now, and I'll show you actually right now on the screen what it looks like. So again, this project is not complete, so kind of just keep that in mind. It's it's not complete. It might not be what it looks like when the course actually comes out, but generally speaking, this is what one of the modules will look like. So here I have the first fragment that comes into view when you start the application. Again, this is like a task tracking app or like a note taking application. I have a couple notes in here, as you can see, you know, the first one, uh, these are the titles. So first one, you know, testing markdown on Android, just testing and blah, 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 blah. You get the idea. So it has the title and the date inside of this recycler view. And you can see that we have the notes module selected. So if you want to create a new note, I would go down to this floating action button. I would say, you know, new note uh, that I'm going to delete. So I'm going to be deleting this. That's the title of it. You can see it takes me to a new fragment. I get a nice little animation. Now the title is displayed up top. I have this trash can icon and if I can collapse the toolbar and the title gets kind of pushed up to the top. So if you did, if you watched my previous vlog, that was what I was messing around with for two days straight, getting this stupid toolbar to do what I wanted to and also being able to edit uh, the content and have the toolbar change correspondingly. So if I edit something in here and I click the check mark, that's saved. Also, if I edit something in the title, click the check mark, that's saved. Um, and then likewise, if I click the X, then it's not being saved. So I actually added markdown capabilities to the, the body of the notes. So if you don't know what markdown is, it's a way that text gets rendered. It's like a, an easy way to do HTML. So if you know HTML, you know that you would do like, if you wanted to do a heading, you would do like an H1 tag, do H1, and then that text would show larger if you were writing HTML. But with markdown, you can do it with these certain symbols. So if I use one number sign, that's like a large heading. If I use two, it's a slightly smaller heading heading and so on and so on. I can keep going with that. Also lists, I can do, you know, item one, item two. And this is really cool This that this text view gets rendered in real time uh, in Markdown. So it's a, it's a nice way to build a note taking application, I think. I'll actually open Trello for you here. So if you open Trello and I was just to like 
click on one of these that's that's what they use so you can see in the in the body of the note here they use markdown if you click into it you can see there's that number sign the the list and whatever so essentially i was trying to copy what this looks like okay so anyway so I did a lot of things like uh, since the last vlog that you watched, you can now update all of this. This will actually get inserted into the cache using the room persistence library. So if I go back, notice that that note is now in the in the recycler view and I can select it and boom, I'm, I'm actually taken to it. So there's a lot of things that I did here, right? Like I can now retrieve notes from the cache, display them in the recycler view. I can create notes and they get inserted into the cache. So if I create a new note, click OK, that gets created. Um, I can update them. So like I I can do an update that update will get sent to the cache now if i go back notice that that's in there and boom it's showing me my updates and i can also delete them and i can delete them multiple different ways so i can delete them by clicking this trash can icon it says are you sure you want to delete this the action can't be undone if i click yes it gets deleted i'm then redirected back to the previous fragment it deletes the note removes it from the list everything's all good also you can delete by swiping so if i swipe this out that will also delete the note just to make sure that that note was actually deleted i can leave the fragment and go back and notice that that is not retrieved because it doesn't exist in the cache anymore so a lot of things and and i also worked on material design so you can tell i kind of added a bit of my own little touch to material design i think this blue color looks really nice on the side it goes nicely with the floating action button also if you go into here there's a nice little blue underline here the collapsing toolbar i think looks really good and this looks even better on a real device so if you it, i don't think the emulator really gives it justice but when i run this on my real phone i think this looks really nice it's a really clean looking ui it's it's simple it's minimal um, I like minimalist kind of stuff you can tell I like white I like the white kind of theme um, but also with a theme like this it's really easy to implement dark theme because you essentially would just invert all the colors black would go to white white would go to black boom very simple so those of you who who spend a lot of time working on Android projects know that the things that I just showed you take a lot of time to build. You know, doing the inserts, the updates, the deletes, the retrievals, that's like very simple. You know, you can do that in only a few lines of code each. You just use the room persistence library, get access to the DAO, insert, retrieve, whatever. You just do your database transactions, very simple. But the UI stuff that I have implemented here, there's a lot of work that, that was done. You know, with the recycler view, for example, you gotta set up a, an adapter, you gotta hook up diff util with it. Also, I, I'm able to swipe stuff, so I need to use an item touch helper, hook that up into the adapter. Also notice when I click on these items, they're highlighted briefly, so if you watch really quick, if I click, it changes to gray and then changes back to white after you click it. So there's, all of those things are not default behavior. Those all take time to to, to set up. And then of course, you know, uh, the uh, the other view, this, this detail view, of course, there's this toolbar that literally took me two days to set up. Man, that was a pain in the ass. Um, and it's, and it's not, and it's not done, obviously, like there's still a lot to do, you know, um, that's, that's why I was talking about this, this idea that software projects are, are never done. You know, I, like I, I was sitting there today thinking, well, I did a lot of stuff today. The app's looking like this module anyway, is looking like partially complete. You can do all the basic things The UI looks okay. But then I looked at it and I'm like, oh man, but there's a lot of little things I need to do. Like what happens if I create a note with like uh, a very long title? So I'll just do like some really, really long title. I click that, click okay. Look at the, the toolbar gets totally screwed up. You know, that's just one example. And then if I go back to the recycler view, you know, obviously it's not showing the whole title. What you should probably do is show like a little ellipses here if it gets too long. And there's, there's a lot of things like that. Like it, there's a lot of little things that I gotta sit back and look at and fix. Like a lot of really tedious things. Um, error handling, you gotta make sure that you're handling all the correct errors, you're showing the user the errors in those cases. Success messages too. Um, another one is what happens if you delete one of these notes. So if I was like to delete this, I should really have like a snack bar down at the bottom that says undo so that uh, the user has like one or two seconds really quickly if they want to undo that database transaction. Like they, whoops, I deleted the note. I actually don't want to delete it. They can click undo. There's a, a lot of little things I still need to do. And you know, usually it's, it's these little things that really make the difference between a good application and a shitty application. For example, I have some old, lots of old projects that I've done. Uh, one specifically comes to mind where it, on the surface it looks okay. Like it, it runs pretty good as long as you don't do anything kind of that you shouldn't do. But if you really play around with it, there's a ton of things that are really, really terrible. And then of course, obviously performance stuff like 
you always like in in all of my projects i always make sure to use leak canary if you don't know what leak canary is it's a very easy to use library that you can hook up into your projects you pretty much just add the depend actually that is literally all you do now is you just add the dependency and it automatically will work for your projects and detect memory leaks so you don't have to do anything you just you know build your app like you usually do every time you use the app that that library is working in the background and it's checking for memory leaks and then if you get a memory leak you get a little notification in your emulator or in your real device and it tells you hey something's leaking memory and it points you in the direction of the thing that might be leaking memory so i always use leak canary because it uh, well obviously because then you detect memory leaks and you can solve them right away but as opposed to waiting till you're done your project or done finished building the app and then you realize that you got a bunch of problems. And all this talk about errors and running into issues and solving them reminded me of a comment that I got on my YouTube channel yesterday. Here's the comment. If I get stuck on something, should I quit or keep going until it's resolved? And on the surface, this might seem like not a very good question. Like it might seem like a very shallow question, but actually it's a really good question. What he's really asking here is, if I'm in development, if I'm working on something and I get stuck, should I, just move on to the next thing and come back to it later? Or should I solve the problem right away? And I responded by saying something along the lines of this. In the past, that's what I would have done. Usually if I was building a project, I didn't want to like, you know, slow myself down and stop and try and fix something if it was like a real big pain in the ass. But, but I really, I ended up shooting myself in the foot a lot by doing that. If I left something and, you know, you know, say it's a, say it's an issue and I move forward and I, it's almost like you're building on top of the issue because if you come back to it and fix it later, the parameters might have completely changed. The, the issue might be now 10 times worse because you have to go back and like rebuild 20, 30, 40 pieces of code that you wouldn't have had to do if you just fixed it right away. So at the end of the day, pretty much always now, like almost a hundred percent of the time, if I run into an issue, I, I fix it right then and there. Even if it takes me like with the toolbar, it took me literally two days to fix that and get, get it going the way I wanted. But I knew that if I just kind of said, oh, I'll do it later, the variables that are involved in whatever you're trying to do can change. So at the end of the day, I, I always recommend now, and I always do this myself, is I try and fix the problem right away because if you come back to it later, things might change and you might end up rebuilding you know, way more things than you would have had to originally if you just fixed the problem. That's it for this video, but one last thing before you go, do not forget to hit the like button. You need to tell YouTube that you like this video or it will not get recommended to other developers who are trying to navigate the Android ecosystem. Hopefully this helped you. Again, do not forget to like it and I'll see you in the next video.